All right, what am I going to look at today? Well, I want to look at a drag racer. And that guy, that means, you know, I've got a small wheel in front and a big wheel in back. And um, I'm going to have it slow down using a parachute. So it's going to have an initial speed and then slow down with its parachute thing. Uh, however many parachutes it actually has. So that is what I'm interested in. He starts off with some initial speed V. Um, he has a mass M and the parachutes have a drag constant D. So I want to figure out what this is as a function of time. So let's see, what am I given? So I've got the um, racer. It has a mass, M, and an initial speed. Uh, I'm going to have to call it V0. Um, let's see, what else? I know that there's a parachute. Uh, with a um, drag constant D. Um, and then what do I want to find? I want to find uh, the force. So find the force as a function of time. Find the force F of T. Okay, so... That should be what I've got. Force there, that's what I want to find. Um, the big idea here is, of course, the drag. I want to do something with the um, drag here. I could also talk about Newton's second law. Newton's second law is how I'm going to actually solve this problem. But our drag force, let's say, is D equal or F equals dV squared. So I want a quadratic drag coefficient. Um, I want to look at this with a free body diagram, of course, because this is a um, Newton's second law problem. So that free body diagram shows us what's really going on. Um, we would like to be sort of complete with these, even in cases like this, when a lot of the things like this weight here uh, isn't going to matter because this normal force here is going to cancel it out and then we have our drag force coming backwards here drag and of course we need a net force going backwards that's the mass times the acceleration okay so we're pretty good with that um, that should be just about everything we need so we're ready to start. We've got a good idea about where we're going. We want to do something with drag. And we want to find the force as a function of time. Um, this is the force as a function of velocity, a function of speed. So we're going to have to just um, first figure out what the uh, velocity dependence is with time and then, in a, um, then use that to find this. Uh, we could take the derivative of the speed, but it's going to turn out that we don't have to do that. Once we find V of T, we can just plug it back into this equation. So let's just start with the free body diagram in that X direction, right this way. So here we have um, the force that we want being equal to the net force. Remember, left side, what touches the box, right side is the net force. Uh, next, since um, we wanted that, we've got that. We don't know that. I'm going to do something with the acceleration. Uh, we know kinematics can give us that, right? Kinematics tells us that that acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time, or in this case, the speed. That's fine. So we're okay with that. Um, we wanted this guy. We don't know the speed though. We don't know the velocity as a function of time. Uh, but we do know this guy up here, right? We know the um, definition of drag. So F, which we already found, so that gets a box 
equals d, which we know, times v squared, which is what we want. So that looks like we're okay. We've got everything, and we're ready to go. We might have to use one or two of these twice, but we're okay. I think we have everything we need to actually solve this problem. So let's see, how do we start this? Well, we start this with our good old f equals ma. And we can also take this, um, so that is our 1. Uh, we can use 2 to replace a with dv dt, right? And we can use 3 to set that equal to d minus dv squared, because it's going the other direction. So minus dv squared. So it's going in the opposite direction of the velocity, so we should have a negative sign there. Um, let's see. What do we do with this? Well, we'd probably like to do separation of variables so that we get dv over v squared on one side and have that equal to minus d over m um, times dt on the other side. So that's our separation of variables. Okay, then we just kind of integrate this. So we want to integrate from our original speed, which is called v0, to our current speed, v of t, right? 1 over v squared dv. And that's equal to the integral from, this is our initial speed, this is our initial time, 0, to our final time, t. We're OK with that, times this constant, minus d over m times t, or dt, excuse me. That gives us, for this right-hand side, that integral is linear, so it's just d over m minus d over m times t. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. We've got half of this done. Now we have to find this part. Uh, the integral of v squared is minus 1 over v. The integral of 1 over v squared is minus 1 over v. It's evaluated at v0 and v of t. So we get minus 1 over v of t minus minus 1 over v0. Okay? And then we do math. And then we do math. Um, Right, we want this guy, and we're going to have to do something with flipping him over. We're going to have to do one over both sides eventually. We want this guy to be alone when we do that, so that we don't have any extra math after we do that. So that's not too hard. We just put this on the other side, so we have 1 over v of t, positive, right? This guy stays on the same side, so we have 1 over v0, plus, because this guy goes to the other side, d over m, times t, and that whole thing is equal to, uh, let's see, m plus dv0t over mv0, okay? So just a little bit of math after we integrate to get that into something that will not hurt our brains after we take the inverse of both sides. So we want to take the multiplicative inverse of both sides, so on one side we have v of t being equal to the other side, which is m v0 over m plus d v0 times t. Right? And like I said, now that we have this, we can plug it into this thing again. We can use 3, right? And we've got our force as a function of time. So. We could also, of course, use 2, um, take the derivative of this, and then after we've found the derivative with the acceleration, plug it back in here, multiply by m. It should give us the same answer, 
only we get to take a derivative, which I know is something you really would like to do at this point, but I don't know if I want to take that time. I can do this in one step, so I'll just do it in one step. So that's d times m squared <clears throat> times v0 squared all over this thing in the denominator, which has got units of mass, m plus d times v0 times t squared. Okay, so that is your answer. That is the force as a function of time that we found from the force as a function of velocity. Uh, there's a reason why I call this the math um, kinematic or the physics kinematics um, connection in your syllabus. It's because we've taken this simple sort of looking equation which describes the physics and gives us a sort of mathy thing that we can plot. So let's see what we can do next. Uh, we want to see first that this thing has all the right um, symbols. We don't want to have any extra symbols in it when we have a symbolic answer. We want our answer to be term in terms of these guys as much as possible. We are also allowed to use that T there. So let's see, what do we have? We have D. We have M. We have V naught, and then we have the T here, which I just said we were allowed to use. So we're okay. We've got everything we need. Um, we only have symbols that were given. Uh, the next quick check is to do the dimensions. Obviously, there's a longer check, which is go and find another way to solve this. And hopefully you get the same result, but maybe you will, maybe you won't, but it will definitely take more time. Um, let's see what sort of things we need to know. Well, we need to know something about this drag coefficient, for example. Uh, what units does it have? Well, you know, your force is mlt to the minus 2. Your velocity is lt to the minus 1. We've got a square of that, so that's L squared T squared to the minus 2. So that drag coefficient has to have M over L as its um, units, right? So we'll go ahead and get that done. Got that? We want to check this guy. First of all, let's check this whole DV naught T and make sure DV naught T um, has units of m, right? So we have d, which was m over l, v naught, which is a which is a velocity, so that's l over t, and then we have time, which is time, so the t's cancel, the l's cancel, we're stuck with units of mass. We're okay. Um, both of these things um, have the same units, so the denominator is dimensionally homogeneous. So we can just use mass for that And when we talk about things on the top. So what happens next? What happens next? Um, let's see. We have the units of D times M squared times V naught squared all over whatever's on the bottom, which is just an M. It has the same units as the M. We already checked that was dimensionally homogeneous. We can cancel that out and be happy. That, actually, that should be M squared, so I'd cancel both of these out. So we only have dV squared, V naught squared. We can tell just by looking at this that it's going to have the right units, right? So this is... Um, yeah, m over l times l over t squared. So we have l squared divided by l. Um, that's l, and we have t squared there, and those are the right units. So we have the right units, and we are happy. So let's see what other things can we check. Well, we can check to make sure it has the right time dependence. As t gets larger, the speed gets smaller. We're okay with that. That's exactly what we want. Um, the faster you start it, right? Uh, the longer it's going to take to slow down. That's good. Um, more drag, faster, uh, more drag is faster reduction. Um, 
So I think we're okay. The mass seems to cancel out. Doesn't seem to matter too much about the mass as long as the as long as D and V naught are all um, okay. So I think we're okay with that. Um, hopefully you can do stuff like this on your quiz because you know that's going to be fine. I mean I won't give you this one. I won't give you um, F equals kv i'll give you some other one if i give you something on a quiz because obviously if i want to see if you can do something i don't want to see if you can do the thing that i already showed you i want you to show me how to do it right so i think that'll be um sufficient for now uh, if you have any questions i mean you can talk to me you can i've got you know a whole class tomorrow to talk with you about and you know i've also got office hours and stuff like that so thank you very much. I'll talk to you later. Bye now.